Good morning, everybody, or good afternoon, depending on where you might uh, be at the moment. Okay, so now we'll just jump on to um, how we detect PD. So for underground cables then, we use high frequency current transformers. They're pretty industry standard for detection of PD in underground cables. Each HFCT is different. It must be considered the different HFCTs. And in fact, these um, frequency, uh, this bandwidth of, of these HFCTs is incorrect um, because recently IPEC have upgraded our HFCT. So we have a much wider uh, bandwidth. Our HFCTs uh, response is, is, is up to sort of 70 megahertz uh, range now. So it's also quite effective at detecting switchgear PD at the same time as detecting cable PD. But that's a side note. HFCTs, um, like I said, quite common um, for use for detecting PD and underground cables. If we take an example of an underground cable circuit and we take a cross section of a cable between two uh, substations, when our small partial discharge occurs, when our PD occurs in this localized uh, cavity defect point, of course, more, most likely to be in a joint, but for simplification, we've drawn it in this nice, uh, perfect example. When a small partial discharge occurs, it will induce a very high frequency signal right, on the inside of the earth sheath and on the outside of the core of the cable. Now, as I mentioned, PDs themselves are very low in energy, and this signal is a high frequency signal. So it doesn't carry much energy with it. It's a high frequency signal, and so it will travel um, similarly like all high frequency signals following their characteristics. So within this cable then, when this PD occurs and it induces on the inside of the earth sheath and on the outside of the core, these two signals are firstly, they're equal and opposite, which means if you put any sort of sensor around the whole cable, you won't be able to detect anything. The two signals are equal and opposite. And of course, the, the actually the arrow direction is, is a little bit incorrect. Of course, they'll both be traveling in the same direction, but one's positive and one is negative. Um, so they're equal and opposite. So we'll put a sensor around, you won't be able to detect it. Equally, they're trapped inside this cable. So high frequency signals, and you've got a metal earth sheath that's surrounding the cable, means that that signal cannot escape. It was trapped inside the signal. It acts as sort of a Faraday cage, keeping that high frequency signal inside. And so what will happen is then the PDs will travel along, uh, the, rather the signal from the PDs will travel then along away from this PD source. So they'll travel in both directions away. And like I said, on the signal on the core will be opposite to the signal on the earth sheath. So because those signals are opposite, it means we need to find a point along this cable circuit where we can separate the core and the earth. And only at a point where we can separate the core and the earth do we have a chance of detecting this PD activity. So in my example here, I've got my HFCT connected to the earth sheath back at the main substation. On a medium voltage circuit, this is the most common place to uh, be able to attach a HFCT quickly. So what will happen is our, I'm just gonna follow the signal that's traveling along the earth sheath now. So what will happen with my fantastic animation, PD signal will travel along the inside of the earth sheath and then out through the HFCT. So signals traveling along the inside of the earth sheath gets to the switchgear termination. The earth is isolated from the switchgear and it will travel through the HFCT. Now this is key. So in order to detect a PD along the earth, we need that earth to be isolated from the switchgear. If that earth is connected to the switchgear, what will happen is that PD signal will go into the switchgear and be lost. And we won't, even if there is an earth, uh, we won't be able to detect it with through the HFCT. The PD won't travel through that HFCT. <laughs> Now, there is another opportunity to detect. Um, so HFCT connection on the earth is very nice because quite often they're accessible, especially if you go above. You do have that problem with the earth um, not being connected to the switchgear. Um, a lot of medium voltage networks comply with that requirement anyway. But when you get to the um, higher voltages, most certainly the earth will be isolated very nicely from the switchgear, especially if you're looking at EHV level, you'll, you'll find a very nice um, isolation between the earth and the switchgear um, to avoid circulated currents. And so connecting a HFCT to the earth sheath is not a problem. You get a very clean signal, you get a very nice signal. On medium voltage um, networks, it may be that the earth goes through a um, insulated bushing and is terminated inside the switchgear. Um, it's still isolated and that earth will still have the PD signal, 
So sometimes we need to uh, maybe take a shutdown of the termination and install our HFCT inside the, um, the switchgear termination. Alternatively, we can also install the HFCT around the um, core of the cable. So as I mentioned before, the PD signal is traveling along the earth sheath and the PD signal is traveling along the core. So it might be that we can find um, a point on the core where we can attach the, the HFCT. Um, and indeed, quite often the core is a much cleaner signal. So although it can, can be maybe more difficult to install the sensor on the core, um, it can be a much cleaner signal. But the important thing to bear in mind is that the signal traveling along the earth sheath, the signal traveling along the core are equal and opposite. And so the next few slides, I'm just going to give some examples of where we can apply HFCTs in order to pull out one of those signals. And basically what we need to do is on each individual case. So like we said, when we're at the EHV level, it's nice and easy. We've got this clean earth. But when we're at the medium voltage level and different types of switch gear and different types of termination methods, we just need to stop. We need to think about how that termination is arranged and where we can apply HFCT. So by we can either separate um, the core or separate the earth. Here's an example. Um, sometimes we can use a very large HFCT. So instead of, so we can of course attach the HFCT to the core here, but maybe the core is, um, the insulation has already been stripped back. Maybe it's too dangerous, too close to a HV point to apply a HFCT here. Sometimes we apply a large HFCT around the um, cable, which as you will notice is included in the core, is included in the earth. So in theory, this shouldn't work. However, because it's positioned above the earth, what it means is that the PD signal traveling along the earth will come out and along the outside and then go back through the HFCT. So if we do our little formula here, we've got two negatives, one positive equals a negative. So sometimes we can look at alternative options such as this to position HFCTs in unique ways in order to still get a resultant signal, in order to still get a PD signal. So like I said, installing a HFCT around the earth sheath, fantastic. Installing a HFCT around the core, fantastic. But in some cases, we need to look at alternative solutions such as this. In this case, it often requires what we call a large HFCT, so a HFCT with a bigger diameter. Another alternative, like I said, the traditional way, HFCT around the earth sheath. So in this example, we could use two options for where we can connect our HFCT sensor. Okay, the next slide is just another, another example. Um, so this is a bit more of a detailed diagram, a detailed example, um, but the theory is the same. We could have a PD occurring along the core, in this case, an equal and opposite PD occurring along the inside of the earth sheath, which would then travel out through the outside of the Earth sheet. So this is practically might be what more in line with what it would look like. Same as the previous slide. We could install a large HFCT around, still at the point where we've got maximum insulation, so still at a very safe location. PD occurring across the core, equal and opposite PD occurring across the inside of the Earth sheath, which then travels out through the gap and back through the HFCT. If the Earth sheath, if the Earth cable came up here, we wouldn't be able to detect the PD, but because it goes back through the HFCT, and this is quite a common cable termination arrangement, so we might find the opportunity to install like this uh, quite often. We can't install below, and we can't install up here. This is dangerous, although it will have PD. It is a very dangerous location to install your HFCT. You would be able to detect the PD, um, but it's too dangerous. And if you install below the earth sheath, you've still got those equal and opposites. So in our example here, this is the perfect location for a HFCT. This or this. So there's some, uh, another couple of examples really. Uh, the aim of those slides really were, were to address the, the concern that some customers have, which is where we can install HFCT on particular termination arrangements. So quite often we can install them on the earth sheath. Quite often we can install them on the core above the earth and quite often, even if it does sit across the earth like this, it still clusters above the earth. And so you can detect the PD. There's a nice example um, of earthen arrangement in Hong Kong, actually. Hong Kong Electric um, have implemented this system of earthen arrangements. Typical problem, um, modern switch gear, the termination is inside the switch gear. And so you can install a HFCT inside the termination. 
And some customers install the HFCT and then run a, a BNC bulkhead connector through the gap. Um, so some customers will, in, will install like that and, and run a bulkhead connector through the gap. Um, the nice solution they, they, they've done in Hong Kong Electric is they've um, installed a temporary earthing, uh, not temporary earthing, sorry. They've installed the earthing onto the outside. So they've, they've insulated bushings, separate this from the switch gear. They've run the earth into the outside so that we can connect to HFCT on the outside. The, the, the benefit of doing it like this, of course, means that you can connect more than one sensor. You can connect different types of sensors. This earthing is always accessible. And so it's a very nice solution. If you install a sensor inside and then run a BNC connector, of course, that's then inside and you'd have to take another shutdown to do the uh, to install the sensor. Uh, but this is just a nice example of, of another um, way to install the sensor. OK, so Badrul um, has asked a question. So before I move on, uh, Badrul from Malaysia has asked a question that if the earthing is floating, where can we place the HFCT? Well, I suppose it depends what you mean by uh, floating. I assume you mean um, in this example that this this wouldn't exist. Um, I.e. the earth is not terminated to anything. Actually, in this example, this would still work because if this didn't exist, um, if this didn't exist, um, then the PD signal would still travel along the inside of the earth sheath and then come out on the outside of the um, earth and then down across the outside of the cable. So this solution would still work. Um, it doesn't obviously this work because we have nowhere to couple the HFCT sensor, but you would still find that the PD signal would go on the inside of the earth sheath travel on the outside and on the, on the outside um, of the of the sheath here. Equally, you can still install the HFCT around the core of the cable only. So in, in your question, Badrul, if the earth is floating, you can install it on the outside um, and you can still fulfill this requirement, um, this requirement here. You will have one signal on the core, an opposite signal on the earth sheath, and again, an opposite signal traveling along the outside as well. Does it matter that this exists or doesn't exist? This solution would still work. The core, of course, would be, in your case, Badrill, actually, interestingly, if the Earth is floating, the core would probably be a stronger place to get the PD signal from. And that's because if your Earth is floating, the likely is, although it's still grounded on the outside of the cable, the grounding would not be as clean, so to speak. So there'd be a higher impedance and so likely uh, more of the PD signal or more of the signal in general is going to be traveling along the core of the cable. So the core would be a much cleaner place to install the sensor. Okay, so and then I suppose just the other point to mention is that if we're looking at EHV applications, if we're looking at um, underground cable circuits at the EHV level, typically 100 kV and above, you may find that there is earthing points along the circuit. So on a medium voltage network, the termination tends to be the only place we can install a HFCT, whether it's on the core or whether it's on the earth. But in an EHV application, we might find places along the circuit where we can install HFCTs. So, for example, at the link boxes, at the cross bonding locations in an underground circuit, there might be earthing that we can apply a HFCT sensor to as well along the circuit. So one more thing to mention then um, is that People often ask how far along a cable can a HFCT detect PD? The answer to that is, is a little bit varied. Of course, it's a, it's a gray area because it all obviously depends how big your PD is. If you've got a small PD, then it, uh, in the early stages, it might not travel very far. If you've got a large PD or maybe a higher um, energy cable, then the PD signal might travel very far. And so depending on the defect type, depending on the level of PD, depends on the distance it will travel. Typically, we say about four to five kilometers up to. Of course, in urban areas, that could be different. If the earthing quality is low, that could be different. Um, but typically, we say about four to five kilometers is the distance of a HFCT. Um, but naturally, there is there is uh, cables that you can see much further along if you're looking at um, if you're looking at say subsea cables, for example, you can see much, much further. Or if you're looking at um, or shorter, if you're looking at urban areas or bad quality cables or, or you know, poor, poor old cables uh, with lots of wear and tear, then, then that distance might be reduced. 
And that's no difference between um, IPEC and any other PD company in the world. We all use similar HFCTs. We all use very sensitive data acquisition electronics. And in fact, IPEX, uh, I think we have the highest resolution of any um, PD measurement um, monitoring device, permanent monitoring solution at least. Um, and so, uh, yeah, it's the same for everybody. I mean, if, if that PD signal can travel to the HFCT or not is the big question. So it doesn't make a difference what type of HFCT you're using. Um, it's more about whether the PD will travel. So I know some some companies um, will, will quote different numbers in terms of distances. Um, and of course, they'll, they might have different definitions, but um, all PD companies are the, are the same. So, um, Badrill said, do you have an example picture of a safe area on the core to install the HFCT? Um, actually, Badrill, I don't have a picture on hand. I can send you one afterwards. Uh, we've installed HFCTs on cores um, across the world. Um, there is, of course, uh, safe areas and dangerous areas on cores to install HFCTs. And it really depends on the switchgear termination type and the distance you have between um, the, 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 so the distance you have between the exposed core and the HFCT is the number one concern for safety when installing a HFCT on a core. And um, the second concern is where the insulation might have been stripped back. So naturally inside the cable termination, slowly the insulation will be stripped back and you don't want to be installing your HFCT at a point where the insulation has been removed. So the safest place on the core is above the earth on the core, a bit like my example here. The full insulation is still in existence in this case. So the full insulation is still here. So this is the safest place. If you started moving up and along here, this is where the insulation slowly starts to reduce. And so installing up here is very dangerous. Installing here, um, like you say, if the insulation has been removed um, is also dangerous as well. So you wanna make sure you've still got that full insulation between your HFCT um, and the actual cable itself. But each case might be different. So on a case by case basis, Badrill, we, we, we could look at that. OK, now, the only other thing uh, to mention is, of course, um, for complete cable PD testing, including the cable terminations, it might be appropriate to install different types of termination sensors. So, for example, and I've missed um, I've missed an embedded UHF from here, which is one of IPEX sensors as well. Um, medium voltage terminations, quite often ultrasonic sensors are used. So if we look at this example here, we can see that these three phases are a little bit too close together. And so we can see a partial discharge occurring between these phases here, uh, an electrical stress buildup here between the phases. We can see this insulation has already been stripped back, but these phases are still too close. So there's a very bad job of installation, but this is perfect for ultrasonic PD detection. If you have an ultrasonic sensor inside this cable termination, directionally, ultrasonic sensors are directional sensors. Looking at these termination, you'll be able to find the PD. You can also detect, um, so PD occurring inside the insulation of uh, cable termination. You may detect with a TEV sensor, so your typical switch gear PD sensor. If we're looking at the EHV level, uh, quite often UHF sensors are used for cable terminations. So while it's, again, on this uh, insulating gland between the, the switch gear and the actual cable, UHF sensors can be used um, to detect PD inside the termination of UHFs. So depending on your application, some customers may only care about the joints and, and, the, um, and the pure cable. Uh, some customers may want to also include um, monitoring of cable terminations as well. So there is alternative sensors to use. Um, thank you very much uh, for your time. Hope you learned something and watch out for new um, information that we'll be sending through. Thank you.